Shin Kamen Rider had a one-night showing in theaters across the U.S. on May 31st. And if I'm comparing the feeling I felt from the toku cultural zeitgeist, this felt like a bigger deal than Shin Ultraman or Shin Godzilla. My timelines on every social group were packed full of people taking pictures outside of their respective theaters with Shin Kamen Rider marquees, with tons of people who cosplayed going to the movie. There was a notable fervor in the tokusatsu fandom. Shin Kamen Rider is the fourth movie in Studio Kara's Shin series, including the rebuild of Evangelion, Shin Godzilla, and Shin Ultraman. Anohi Adagi, the studio founder, was the primary director for the rebuild movies, with other co-directors depending on what part you look at. Anno also wrote Shin Godzilla, Shin Ultraman, and Shin Kamen Rider. But Shinji Higuchi co-directed Shin Godzilla and was the sole director for Shin Ultraman, making Shin Kamen Rider the only Shin film that can really be attributed as a pure Anno vision. And true to Anno's history, it's divisive as hell. You see, if you're invested in the Shin world of movies, you've already seen a Godzilla movie that's trying to recontextualize the monster, taking it from its history as a symbol for atomic warfare into a modern analog for the potential of nuclear nuclear devastation when politicians fail to act or be truthful to its people. Or you saw Shin Ultraman, a movie that uses the spirit of the time of its source material and attempts to adapt an entire 39 episode series worth of story and action beats into a streamlined narrative relatable to a modern audience. If you've gone through all that, you've probably already developed an idea of what the Shin Kamen Rider movie is going to be. Or at least I did, and I can admit that that's kind of unfair to the movie. There is a lot to love. Shin Kamen Rider has love for its source material for miles. There is no mistake that this is made with a complete admiration for the original 1971 Kamen Rider TV show. There is this line as a tokusatsu fan that you have to walk. Knowing that something is ultimately silly and goofy, but those silly and goofy things are also something that you can see and feel on a deeper level. You can look at Showa Ira Tokusatsu and say, look at the rubber suits or how cheap the effects are, and how sloppy the camera work is. But this movie doesn't say, hey, let's divorce it from those elements and turn it into something that people would find more modern and cool and acceptable. It says, these things are already cool and that's what I already love about it. And in that aspect, Shin Kamen Rider meets its ambition, doing its best to recycle locations from the original series, matching shots by comparing soil and road types from 50 years ago, recycling shot lengths and speed and working everything together to give it a nostalgic feeling to the edit, and straight up avoids a lot of the handcuffs of modern action techniques. The way it does establishing shots on exteriors or magically transporting someone from an interior fight to an outside pursuit with zero transition just screams affection. But in in pursuit of everything that it homages, it also still encourages innovation and excitement. There are iPhone and GoPro shots all over the movie. It takes chances with those experimental filming techniques that I feel helps further the implied action of the Showa era. It gives the action scenes this sense of rawness. Some sequences were pulled directly from the original episodes, while others were brand new twists on old concepts, complete with miniature sets and explosions that every tokusatsu film probably needs. For me, it always contains that feeling of unrefined fun, the excitement of shooting without a storyboard. It's one of the things that always has and continues to draw me to tokusatsu as a whole. It also has all the hallmarks of the other things that Anno's directed, with very up close reaction shots and wide angle lenses that distort the geometry of people's faces, while it uses things like fast cuts of people jumping in the air only to see their impact landing. And with all that frantic quick cut camera work, it still has time for those long isolated camera shots that Anno is known for, leaving you as a viewer by yourself with your thoughts as you sit and analyze what the characters are feeling in this moment as it holds just a little too long. And I feel like I have to mention that there's a scorpion lady that is maybe only in there because Anno needs something to be horny at some point in every project. The raw filming techniques also work hand in hand with the thrown back but modern costume designs. The Shin Kamen Rider suit was decided to stay very much reminiscent of the 1971 version. It's still updated with more screws and rivets, reinforced gloves, and additional designs to the Typhoon Henshin belt, giving it the feeling of being a prototype piece of machinery. And the detail that I found the most attractive is the exposed skin and hair at the neckline. This never lets you shake the feeling that Hongo, the man under the mask, has been turned 
turned into a tool designed for violence. Hongo's journey into destroy a series of Ogs, born from the maybe evil organization Shocker. While Kamen Rider's design stayed true to the Kamen Rider No. 1 suit of old, the updated generals take on much more notable changes. Looking at Spider-Og, the renewed form of Man-Spider, they do not share design philosophies and instead aim to keep a more modern villain feeling. You see accents of Man-Spider's red and black costume turn into a punk jacket. His cape is blended into part of his pants that have too many zippers and Shocker crests. And probably most notably, the running motif between all of the Ogs. A helmet that features braided hair that mimics spider legs. Calling back to the spider legs on the top of Man Spider's head, but it's very much doing its own modern thing. I like these updates, I think it keeps the design philosophy bold. While the helmets are always linking back to Kamen Rider, being in an escape tool of Shocker, as well as breaking from the monster of the week designs, it makes everything visually feel really connected. But unfortunately, the story, characters, and plot make this movie impenetrable for general audiences, or really anybody outside of the tokusatsu bubble. The movie has no beginning, there's no origin story, no setup or profound understanding of who or what Shocker truly is. As an audience member, you feel like you're looking in a fishbowl. You have an idea and concept of what's happening, but never truly understand the people in this world or what's happening inside of it. The movie opens with a chase scene with the spider dog capture in Roriko when Shin Kamen Rider saves her. They harness the power of prana, which is basically the Sanskrit word for life force or life energy, using the prana of different animals to turn them into weapons and achieve ultimate happiness. You just never really learn much beyond that. What is Shocker's ultimate plan? How are they influencing the world? It's mentioned that they're a cult, but it never really gives you much to go on. And to some degree, I can appreciate this type of storytelling, giving you crumbs of information and letting you build the world inside your head. At the same time, nothing feels concrete. I should mention that there's a prequel manga series titled There Is No Peace In This World, and that may answer some of these questions, but I haven't read it and I don't really feel like I should have to in order to watch this movie. You get to spend time with Hongo, Roriko, and Ichimoji. You do get to see these characters change and evolve throughout the movie. It's nothing groundbreaking, but there is a character journey. It's just that those character growths don't really fit or complement the superhero story that it's trying to tell. And some of their destinations, I understand and I know how we got there, but they don't really feel fully earned. There's a character from Shocker named K, who is an artificial intelligence. The character is also a reference to the robot detective, also created by Shotaro Ichimori, the creator of the original Kamen Rider series. I talked about the show once with Achilles and Gem on the Tokusatsu World Tour podcast, but that's really not super important here. K is a character you get a backstory for and has a ton of camera time, but he also never feels like he's part of this story, unless you take the time to draw into your own feelings and make your own interpretations. But still, I love the cinematic mystery of the character and the feeling and concept of the character alone. I just couldn't shake the feeling that after receiving all this information and a backstory that I had this information, but nothing to apply it to inside of the movie. Shin Kamen Rider succeeds as a love letter to Tokusatsu. It's divisive, and at times, it's downright unwelcoming. It's really, honestly, not the movie I expected it to be. I think I wanted this to be a tokusatsu movie that I could show to non-tokusatsu friends. And still, due to the lack of an incohesive story and plot, I find it almost impossible to recommend to somebody who's not already a Showa-era tokusatsu fan. But as somebody who likes to explore movies and invites dissection and interpretation, I think there is a world of things to explore here. And I honestly haven't stopped thinking about this movie inside of its individual moments. If you're somebody who doesn't care about story and plot and things that make a good cohesive narrative movie, and you just want some frantic action, this can be a lot of fun. I love this movie visually and its use of color and its choice of editing, the implementation of high-end cinematic camera shots, juxtaposed with the utilization of the camera that I carry inside my pocket every day. It's just such an interesting movie. Yet, if you want a good story or engaging characters, it's 
practically anemic. But if you want a movie that you can analyze and study and engaging debates about your interpretations, I think there's plenty of meat to bite into here. And I really think in time, some of the more negative reactions are going to give way to exciting, possibly provocative conversations. I hope we get three hour long YouTube essays about the interpretive meaning and significance of this in a film study context. Shin Kamen Rider is not the movie I wanted it to be, but it's a movie that I'm grateful that we have. And I've loved to see the level of excitement and electricity of people anticipating it and engaging with it and the fact that it got to be shown in theaters, even if it was just for one night. And I really can't wait to hear more about what people thought and felt and whether they hated it, loved it, or somewhere indifferent. I think this is a cool movie and I just hope it sparks discussion. I'm Hi-C and I hope you keep watching.